Alright, hello guys. Just um, doing a quick mic check to get started. Uh, if you can hear me, please let me know. Uh, if you can hear me. Alright, and it looks like we are live and good to go. Hello everybody, it feels like it's been forever. Um, because I had a secret job that I had to do on Saturday. Um, so I was not able to do it and Phil took over for me. So Phil, thank you so much for doing that for me. Um, as Phil told you, the reason why I'm not doing evenings is because unfortunately I do have other work at that time. Now, that being said, uh, I we chose this two o'clock time spot specifically because we had some of our fans asking us to do morning slots for them and they were generally in the Middle East um, but please let us know if this time works for you um, I'm flexible in the afternoon so if you would prefer that the live stream start a little bit later um, maybe instead of from 2 to 3 if it was from 3 to 4 or even from 4 to 5 please let us know in the comments down below um, what you would prefer um, we can also do it a little bit earlier, but I have a feeling that if it goes too early, then people won't be waking up in time to view them. All right, so again, please let us know in comments what you would prefer. But without further ado, we're gonna get started. Um, so today we are going to be doing task one, describing a process, specifically a man-made process. Um, you could have a process essay of a natural cycle as well, like the hydro cycle or um, the carbon cycle. These are other things that can totally uh, be what you need to write about. But today we are doing a man-made process. These are typically things like how something is produced or a workflow for a certain product, um, like for example, how cell phones are made or how cell phones are recycled. Um, there's a lot of different ways that it could be done. Uh, by the way, also remember that you can submit your own writings and speakings to us at corrections at the IELTSgrind.com. We will mark them completely for free uh, and live. So far, the people who have given us essays have said that it has been helpful. So hopefully you guys will do the same. We are eager to take your writings and your speakings. Please send them to us. We would love to help you out. Now, also remember that this is a class, which means it is better when it is interactive. Um, so that means that you guys should be talking in chat. If no one is talking in chat, it makes me very sad. And we will probably um, end it sooner than we normally would. Um, so please talk in chat. When you arrive, please say hello. If you have questions, please ask them. And if I'm going too fast or too slow, please tell me. Um, also, this is a time where if you don't want to send us a whole essay, you can send us sentences during the class and I will let you know whether or not they are okay and I will fix them for you as needed. Um, so yeah, one last thing, please make sure that you are live. What I mean is that um, if you are, if you find our channel and you're watching our video, hello everybody. Don't forget to hit that like button. But also, if you are, if you started later and you're watching in the past, um, I highly, highly recommend that you hit the live button so that you are up to date because this is a class. You can watch um, the replay anytime you want after the live stream. These all go up and we keep sharing them. If you want to be active in the class and have sentences for us to work on it is better if you are live okay while we're here please remember that you can see the document we're working on in the description um so you can see that right here you can see what we are going to be writing our essay about by the way remember you can use these essays yourself um to you can use this prompt or another prompt to send us your essays and this is the email you can send them to. And then finally, we do have our full schedule here and our weekly schedule just in the description. 
All right, so now that that is out of the way, let's get into it. What we will do today, first of all, we are going to quickly review the basics of task one, really fast, one minute. Then we'll go over common mistakes for this kind of essay. We'll analyze the diagram. We'll create an essay together. This is where interaction is extremely important. Then if you guys have any questions, you guys can ask me. And finally, uh, this is new. We are going to review any homework that was sent to us. So it was a little strange, I'm sure, for you guys, but last live stream that was on the 17th, um, Thursday, I believe, I gave you guys homework and some of you guys sent us stuff. So I will be going over the homework that you sent. And then finally, we will finish task two um, from last live stream as well. All right, so the basics, 150 words, 20 minutes. Really, you have 10 to 15 minutes to write because you need to be analyzing, planning, and proofreading. And what they grade you on is task achievement. Do you answer the question? Cohesion, coherence and cohesion. Do you connect your ideas? Um, do you use the correct structure for an essay? Uh, you know, intro, overview, body one, body two. Um, vocabulary, do you use high level vocabulary? Do you use it correctly? Do you have mistakes? And grammar is exactly the same. All right, so this is the meat and potatoes, common problems that people have when they are describing a process. First of all, a really common mistake is that a lot of students will copy the words that the diagram gives you. So a lot of times the diagram will of course be pictures showing how a process works, but then they will often use high level vocabulary that are naming the steps. Um, so for example, if it was a process about growing uh, fruit trees, it might be, there might be a step where someone is cutting the branches and then underneath there will be a word that says pruning um, or hydrating, uh, maybe for, or pulping for a recycling process. Um, you can use those words, but if you use them exactly as you see them, they do not count towards your vocab score. They do not count towards your 150 words. Um, we are going to talk in a little bit about what you should do. Next is not describing what you see. A lot of students look at the labels for the steps. So oftentimes there will be words, there will be uh, one word or two words that are describing a stage in a process and they describe what the word is, but they aren't actually describing the picture. Now this is okay, but if you want a really high score and if you want to make sure that you have enough to write about, you should be describing what you see. This is the skill that they're testing. Can you describe a picture? Can you describe what you see? Um, third mistake that people make is they say why. Uh, remember, that's a big no-no on task one. And then finally, you should not use first or firstly and finally when you're describing a cyclical graph. So if there's anything where it's a circle, um, like my mouse is doing, you should not use first or finally um, because there is no beginning and there is no end. So what you should do is change the word or paraphrase any words that you see on the diagram. So change the words, you can change the verb form. What that means is if they give you a noun, change it to a verb. If they give you a verb, change it to a noun. Um, para or you can paraphrase it, describe it using different words. Um, do not only say what is written, but also describe what is drawn. And again, this is to help you with that second problem. This is especially helpful because a lot of people can't think of enough to write. They can't write 150 words. If you describe what is in the pictures, you will have enough words for your essay. And of course, as everyone already knows, no I, which means no opinions, no why, no reasons, and no conclusions. This second one is particularly difficult for a lot of people because they like to add extra words. And so they try to say why the step is happening. Don't do that. Um, only write what you can see. All right, guys, let's keep going. And let's jump into the actual essay today. All right. So uh, please let me know if you can't see this or if it's a little bit blurry. I apologize. 
if that's the case on mobile, um, it, it can be a little bit blurry. Uh, it's a problem that we still need to work on. If you're on desktop, there will be no problem at all. Okay. Um, also remember guys, that on this live stream, you guys can click right here and see it yourself. You guys can copy and paste, um, do whatever you want to the document itself. Okay, and of course, remember that do not be watching the replay, watch it live. So, let's look at what we've got here. We have a task one. They will always tell you how long it should take. And then what's in the box is going to be describing it. Uh, and this is actually what we will be using to write the intro. And then the process is done here. Now, we can see two things right off the bat. Number one, this is man-made because people are doing these steps. And the second thing is that there is an end. Um, so there's a couple things starting at the beginning and then they're all put together and then there is an end. So we can use beginning and end here. All right, um, so there are a couple of different ways that we can organize this. Um, probably have body one being the gathering of the ingredients, the preparation, and then body two would probably be the actual creation of sushi. I think that that would be pretty good. So let me write this down so everyone, in case I speak too quickly, body one, before kitchen, body two will be in restaurant. Okay, so um, a few things we do want to mention all the steps, and there are a lot of steps here. There's actually more steps here than we'd normally see on a task one essay. Um, however, just because there are a lot of steps doesn't mean that this will be more than 150 words. Um, a lot of these things, like these three steps right here, can easily fit in one sentence. Um, the salmon is caught, it has its fish eggs removed, and then both the eggs and the meat is transported. That's one sentence describing three steps. Uh, and you guys will be able to do this a lot. Um, another thing that we should be saying is that these three lines are happening at the same time. Uh, so we can use a CC word to describe that. That's something that they want you to do to get a high score especially, is they want you to be relating these to each other. Um, so first, second, third, of course, but also at the same time, at the same time. All right. And inspect, prepare. And then these steps are a little bit complicated. But then you have your sushi roll at the end. And this is how sushi is made. Excellent. All right. I think it's time for us to get started. So the very first thing we should do is we need to have an intro. Now your intro in task one is always going to be very easy. It should not take two minutes. It should not take five minutes. It just should take 30 seconds. They give you a sentence. All you have to do is say it with different words. So the diagram below shows how sushi rolls are produced. We can say, uh, sushi roll production is shown, uh, and we should use a different word than shown, is illustrated in the given diagram. All right, I hope you guys see that I went from active voice to passive voice. This is a really nice, easy trick that can show off your grammar muscles. And then I went from sushi roll production to from how sushi rolls are produced. So again, I'm showing off my vocabulary and grammar skills in my very first sentence. After this, we should have our overview. By the way, if you guys want to send in chat uh, your own intros, feel free. Um, if you are a slow typer, that is perfectly okay. 
take your time, type your sentence, and then put it in chat, and I will let you know if your grammar and vocabulary is okay, and if it is a good um, change from the original. Now, secondly, with task one, you always need an overview, um, and we use the word overall to say, this is my overview. Um, please, please, please just always use the CC word. It makes it really clear to the examiner. It is true that a high level English user could write an overview that's clear without using this word, but it just makes it easy for you. It makes it easy for the examiner. And if you do not have an overview, then your essay can only have a five in task achievement. Um, and that's bad. Even if you have an eight in vocab, an eight in grammar, an eight in CC, if you have no overview, five in task achievement. So please don't forget this. It's extremely important. Um, okay. By the way, guys, please remember to say hello as you drop in. Um, all right. So overview. I have some good news for you guys. When you guys are writing an overview for describing a process, you should be so happy because it's really, really easy. Um, with other types of task ones, you really have to analyze the graph to find the most important, uh, to describe the whole graph in one picture. You have a really easy sentence frame for describing a process. This process requires one, two, three, four, f one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Eighteen steps divided into two main stages. This is a perfectly good overview. This overview would guarantee you get a six for your overview, um, for your task achievement. This is great. However, we can make it a little bit better. This is the basic one. Um, to make it a little bit better, we can add some details to the end. This process requires 18 steps divided into two main stages. Those in the, those done before arriving to the restaurant. And then, so this is really high level uh, grammar and vocab. Let me just make it easy for you guys. In the restaurant and before the restaurant. Okay. So again, the reason why the sentence frame is so nice and easy is if you learn the first part and you just find out what you can change, you've got it. You have the overview you need. Um, if you want to add some more details, this is how you do it. Uh, alternatively, you could say, and this is just so you guys can see some other Some other overviews that would be perfectly okay. We have overall this process requires 18 steps divided into two main stages starting with the raw ingredients and ending with a sushi roll delivered to the customer. So again, this is a second type of sentence frame that you guys can use. And all you would have to do is change after starting and after with. And you guys can modify this for any process, for any man-made process, as long as it's not cyclical, as long as there's no start and end. Okay. So, nice. We've got our overview. We've got our intro. Now we need our body one. Now we are just going to copy um, the structure that we laid out in our overview. So first we're going to talk about before the restaurant. So um, I'll have a little topic sentence here. First, the ingredients are gathered and processed. 
all at the same time. And if you wanted to uh, to change this, you could use the higher level words simultaneously. Um, all at the same time is easier language. Uh, by the way, one thing. Nav, hi, welcome. Glad to see you. Thanks for joining. Um, I'm doing pretty good. Happy to see you. Happy to see chat being active. Um, so I hope you are doing great as well. Uh, let me know. You can have your own sentences, by the way, if you want to throw them in. Um, yes, right now we are describing the before the kitchen. Uh, this is how sushi is made. And uh, this is going to be body one. And this is going to be body two. Uh, yeah, awesome. I heard that Phil got to help you with your speaking. So I hope that was helpful. So happy that you were able to call in. Um, by the way, this is something that Phil has been doing. He's been doing live mock exams. Um, I cannot do them, but Phil is very, very happy to do so. Uh, so I hope you guys all find that useful and call in with his next one. Actually, um, let's see if he's updated the schedule. Ah, his next live speaking is actually going to be on Friday. On Friday, Phil will be doing a live speaking mock test, uh, just like Naz has done. Uh, Naz, I hoped you liked it. If you did, please say in chat how great it was. Um, and yeah, anyone can call in. All right, but let's jump back on here. It doesn't take too long to do a task one. Um, our buddy one is going to be about these steps. So first I will say um, the salmon is caught. Can we think of another way to say this? The salmon is fished out of rivers. Yes. Okay. First, okay. Salmon is harvested from the oceans and rivers and processed by removing up oh, and the eggs and meat are harvested. All right. Then it is frozen. Then the meat and eggs are frozen and transported. Ah. transported by truck. So this is something that I want to point out. The picture shows a truck. It doesn't say how. Um, it doesn't say truck here. You need to look at the picture and realize, OK, I can say by truck. Are transported by truck. If the restaurant is far from the source, these trucks are refrigerated. So I know that I'm using pretty high level vocabulary right here. Um, but I want you guys to see when they give you language, when they say transported, frozen if far, um, your job is to find different ways to say this. Um, because again, if you copy these words in your text, they don't count towards your word count. Um, so again, that is a really common mistake that you guys need to get used to. Now, we finished the first line, and now we need to do the second and the third. So we will say, At the same time, and I want to show you guys, ah, just scroll up. 
um, that you can put all of this into one sentence. Rice is grown, harvested, dried, and transported. Um, I can't really think of other ways to say this. Can you guys? Uh, the rice used in the rolls is harvested, So let's see if we can change it to the noun form. The farming, harvesting, transport, and transport of the rice used in the sushi rolls is happening. It was breathtaking. Well, wow, that is high praise, Naz. <laughs> I will be sure to tell. Um, I will be sure to tell Phil how amazing the live stream was. <laughs> this the mock speaking exam. I'm glad that it was so useful. Thanks, Naz. Okay, so um, again, I want to point out the farming, harvesting, and transport. I am using the noun form of harvest dried and transported. This it would be really easy to turn into the passive voice. The rice is grown, harvested, dried, and transported. Um, so that's what I forgot. And I used the nouns. Um, another thing that I really want to point out is that I am using CC words to be saying that this is happening at the same time as the salmon harvesting. Okay. Finally, uh, the sea, the seaweed. So, again, we're just going to talk about these three steps. And honestly, we're going to do something a little cheeky. We're going to realize that the drying is the same and the transport is the same and it's being harvested. So what we're going to say is at the same time of both the rice and seaweed used in the sushi rules is happening. Now the only difference is the farming and but it's fine <laughs> it's a little bit off but it's fine um really what i'm showing is that i can use this to save time and put it into one sentence you want to be concise this is something that examiners are looking for number one are you very clear in your language by the way it is better to clearly say something than to try to use high level language wrong and make mistakes. It's it's better to be clear about what you're saying. But when you start getting to the higher level um, essays, for example, a lot of you guys really want really high level scores like eights and nines. Um, if you want those, you want to be concise um, if possible. Uh, by the way, um, there is nothing special about these, no frozen if far, and so we really don't need to say anything else here. I can't, there's also not anything about um, the, there's also not anything special here that I would need to describe in the pictures. Um, so yeah. And again, we're changing it from the passive voice to the noun form for these. All right. Secondly, let's do the second paragraph. Um, the preparation of the rolls takes place in the restaurant. 
And this is something that we're kind of gleaning here. It doesn't say that it's in a restaurant, but you can assume that it is because there's a chef here with a little chef hat. And where else is sushi made? Okay, so... Um, I would say first the sushi is inspected. Yes. Uh, you know what? I'm going to do the prep. So I know outside uh, from real life, from real life experience, that the first thing that always happens is that the fish are inspected um, because you need to make sure that it's good. However, it's going to be a little bit easier if I start from here because the fish are added to the roll, to the rolling stage. Um, so let's start with the rice and the seaweed. So, when the rice and seaweed arrive, the seaweed is cut, and both are prepared by a chef. And again, I want to point out here, by a chef, it doesn't say by a chef, but it is in the picture. Um, also, I'm going from preparation from the noun to the passive voice. Okay. And again, if you guys want, remember you guys can be looking at this from the description and you guys can be leaving your own sentences in chat or if you're watching this later, you can leave them in the comments. Um, and I will be happy to go back and tell you how you did. Um, yes. So the the chef prepares it and the seafood is used the seafood and the rice is used as the bed no the seaweed is used as a bed for rice got it during this stage this the cut seaweed and this is another thing you should be doing is you should be when something changes in the process, you should be using um, the language to say that it's cut seaweed. Is used as a bed for the prepared rice. And both are put onto a roller. So the rolling stage, this is called a roller, or this is what I'm calling it. Um, now we can go and do the fish. When the fish first arrived, <laughs> nice Naz. Naz says, I started imagining that Phil is the examiner for the real exam. <laughs> that is good. It's probably not intimidating at all. It's probably not scary if you picture Phil. If you picture Phil and my voice, it will be perfect. Okay, so when the first first arrived, it was inspected and cut into fillets. Um, now you don't need to change every single time. Uh, I've already shown that I'm pretty good with my word form, so it's perfectly fine here. this fish, these fish fillets, so these fillets, and the fish eggs are added to the ro roller and the, well let's see, ah, the fish is on top. So it looks like the rolling happens and then the eggs and fish are added. It looks like the eggs are in the middle. It also looks like there's some egg and avocado in here. Hey, diagram, this could be better. Where's the egg and avo avocado? 
Um, so I'll say the fish eggs are added to the roller and the sh sushi is rolled. Finally, the fish fillet is added on top of this roll and sent to the customer. Okay. So is there anything else that we can add here? I don't think so. I think we've got most of it. And let's see how we did. We've got 150 words, 186. Fantastic. So we have finished a task one together. Um, again, if I'm going too fast here, you guys can uh, see in the description of this video, the link right here, and you guys can check it out by yourself and go through it at your own time. You guys can write your own essay for this task one and send it to us, or you can use a different one. Just make sure that if you do that, you send it, um, you send us the prompt and your essay. Uh, we do prefer it typed, um, because then we don't have to type it up ourselves if you send us a picture. Um, and again, the whole process is right here. So again, just to go over this, uh, we have our intro where we rephrased the prompt. We have our overview, which is, let's actually add indents here. We have our overview, which again, you can just use this sentence frame. We have another sentence frame down here. Sent the overview for process diagrams is so easy. It should take you no time. 30 seconds to write this out. Um, it's a little bit more difficult when you're doing body one and body two. Uh, the main things that you guys need to do, look at the picture, see what you can describe, like for example, the chef, and for example, the truck, um, that is not said down here. And when they do give you words, like for example, dried, transported, and cut, make sure that you can at least some of the time change how it is. Uh, so verb to noun, noun to verb, that kind of thing. Um, also, finally, the blue, make sure that you are saying when the steps are happening in relation to each other, if you can. So most of the time, it will be first, second, third, fourth, but sometimes it will be simultaneously. So these steps are happening at the same time. They're happening simultaneously. All right. Um, and when you can, be concise. Put the words together. Both the rice and the seaweed were used. I didn't say this step one sentence and this step a second sentence. I put them into one sentence together. Uh, be concise if you can. All right, guys. This is a beautiful task one describing a process. I'm very proud of it. Um, just to point out a few more things, we have a time phrase here that's saying when it arrived, which is nice, adding some information here. And likewise up here. All right, guys, do you guys have any questions? As we can see, we have finished common mistakes. We have finished the review of the basics. We analyzed the diagram and we wrote our own essay. Um, so we have questions and then we're gonna review any homework that was sent to us. So do you guys have any questions about task one describing a diagram? I'll just have one minute pass to see if anybody has any questions and then we'll move on to reviewing someone's homework because someone actually sent us a body two, Raghav did, which makes me so happy. Okay, so 
If you guys have questions about this essay, feel free to ask at any point. Um, or if you have questions about writing, or the IELTS exam in general, or even cultural questions, I'm perfectly happy to answer any. I can tell you about what it's like being an expat, someone who's living abroad. I've lived in Taiwan now for, um, what, six years? Yeah, six years, and before that I lived in China for two. Um, and I am American, so if anyone's planning on going to America, you guys can ask me questions about what it's like to be in America, or questions about Americans in general. Um, but as I'm waiting for your questions, we are going to start looking at the task two homework feedback. Now, this is connected to the live stream that we had previously. Um, if you guys go to the IELTS grind, you can see that we had a task two problem, how to write an IELTS um, task two problem solution essay. And unfortunately, chat was a little bit quiet this day. Um, and so after we analyzed it, we came up with ideas, we brainstormed. And then at the end, uh, we started writing the essay together. And we finished in the intro, we finished body one, but we did not finish body two. And so what I said was for homework, please write your own body two and send it to us. Um, and so what we're going to do very quickly is just really quickly review the body one that we wrote together, review the intro and the body one, and then we will look at Raghav's body two. So um, this was the problem solution essay. As universities are competing with each other, they are offering more services and spending more time on marketing, which in turn is increasing tuition costs. Discuss this problem and give some solutions. We are seeing more and more universities spending an increasing amount on student services and marketing. So just rephrasing the topic. While it may sound like a good thing to have a new gym or student center at your university, the costs are being passed on to the consumer, which is a problem. So I'm saying what the problem is. And let's actually just copy this over and put it above rag halves, just so you guys are able to look at it on the same on the same page. Okay, so now this is all on the same page as before. Um, that you guys can be looking at through the link. So, uh, this essay will discuss this problem and give some possible solutions. This is the thesis. This is, this is the thesis that you should use for any task two. In case it's not clear, we are talking about task two now, not task one. So we finished task one. Again, if you guys have questions, feel free to ask, but we are reviewing some homework from last time for RAGHAV. Okay. Uh, body one, universities are spending their money to compete with one another, uh, um, has led, so, sorry, we need to delete this. Universities spending their money to compete with one another has led to rising tuition prices, which is a serious problem because of the burden that it puts on students and their families. This is something that we had brainstormed together, and this is our topic sentence. Because this is our topic sentence, that means every other sentence in this paragraph needs to be about the burden it puts on students and their family. When students need to pay these high prices, they often need to work at the same time. This leads to worse performance in school. So this is the negative result that happens because of this problem, as they don't have enough energy in class and the reason. And then we have an example. A good example of this is my friend who was not able to clear his master's degree in Australia because he was not focusing on his studies due to a part-time job in the mall. Um, this is a really good sentence because it connects the ideas in a way that I need to make sure you guys are doing. Many students have trouble connecting their ideas. I have a really useful little thing to remember. English readers, English listeners are stupid. If you do not say a connection, there is no connection. 
Now, in many other languages, it's the listener or the reader's job to make connections in their head. In English, that's not how it happens. You need to say it clearly or there is no connection. So this is a good example of a sentence doing that. Okay. The example is my friend couldn't complete his master's because he was not focusing because he had a part-time job. Um, additionally, so this is a new extra point. This is how you use the word additionally. So this all was point one. This is now point two. Many students parents end up sacrificing their own futures for their children's when they take out loans so they can go to school. And they means their children, obviously. All right, let's see what Raghav had for his body too. One effective solution to deal with um, I'm just going to add some words as we go. These encumbrances uh, put on by soaring uh, we need to change this um, by the way guys one really common thing is students try to paraphrase everything but sometimes just the right word is the right word. So what I mean by that is here we would just say tuition prices is for uh, governments. Okay, right now what we're just doing is we're just going through and fixing the grammar really fast is for governments to increase ah okay I see what he's saying to increase wages and the number of working hours for foreign students uh, because it's foreign students in general we don't use the article we don't say that moreover authorities should make measures in a rather rather diligent matter, okay, with the procreation of employment. To be more specific, we'd probably change this to be a new point. To be more specific, uh, and again, just using a different color to ch show it changes, they should make well-paid jobs with fringe benefits and proper retirement I don't know if fringe is the right word here. Could be wrong. And proper retirement benefits for a secure future. Okay, um, so this is, why is he only talking about foreign students? Okay, I am glad that I caught this. So him connecting his ideas within his paragraph is really good. His CC, for his paragraph is quite good within his paragraph. He's connecting his sentences together very well. His problem though is that he's focusing on one thing that is not connected to the problem. The problem is that consumers have higher costs because of increasing university spending and increasing amount on student services and marketing. This is the problem right here. And because of this, costs are being cost down to the consumer. So he was able to get this part. He was saying that tuition prices are rising. However, he's forgetting to mention that the root of the problem, the main reason the problem is happening is because universities are spending an increasing amount on student services and marketing. So his, he is being off topic in his paragraph, which will lower both his CC and his task response for this task to essay. So again, inside the paragraph, it's great. Um, he's connecting his ideas. It's a cohesive paragraph but it is off topic 
because I don't see how increasing wages and working hours for foreign students, I don't see how this connects to the topic, which is universities are competing and spending more on um, marketing and student activities. Um, yeah, so off topic, topic sentence, and so off topic essay, body two. Um, just to finish fixing the grammar and vocab though, another possible, I don't know this word. Let me look it up. Okay. Explanation that makes something clear, clarification. That's a very ironic definition for such a complicated word. Eli <laughs> what is this? Oh, geez. I'm going to have to ask someone. Um, okay, so this is actually used correctly, but I do want to point out something um, that does happen sometimes. So this is not a great example of a common problem that I want to explain, but the problem is sometimes you learn words that are extremely high level usually they're very specific to a certain industry um, or like what your job or study is about and you learn extremely high level words that are not common knowledge and you need to remember that a lot of these examiners um, yes they all have a bachelor's degree uh, but they don't know everything so sometimes if your essay is making lower level errors um, in vocabulary and grammar and then you use an extremely high level word correctly that the examiner doesn't know, the examiner is going to assume that you used the word wrong. Um, and this is just something that you need to be careful of. Now, of course, if, the, if you were writing an essay that was an eight or a nine, and then you use a high level word that the examiner doesn't know, he's going to assume that it's not a mistake because the rest of your essay is extremely high level. So you, you probably just use a word that they don't know. But if you are writing a low level essay and then you use a high level word correctly that they don't know, they're going to assume that you're making a mistake. So this is correct. This is absolutely correct. It's extremely high level. It's so high level that I didn't even know this word. But it is something that you need to be careful of, especially if you're using jargon from your work um, or jargon from your studies. Okay. Aforementioned, this is really nice referencing issue, is undemanding. Rem I don't know if this is used the right way. Remuneration, this is correct. Of loans with gullible. This is definitely uh, used incorrectly. Installments and low simple interest manageable by the prayers payers okay <laughs> and they are not exhausted so we need to use a different cc word here so another possible elucidation for the affirmation issue is the undemanding remuneration of loans with installments and low simple interest manageable by the payers so that they are not so that they are not um, exhausted mentally and physically by ease re reimbursement of loans by negotiating with fiscal administration Okay, this is not connected to anything. At the end of the debate, benefit students, but also boon to the parent. But is also. Okay, just little grammar things, but they do add up. Is also a boon to the parent. Okay. If you have too many mistakes, by the way, this is another way that you can lower your score. It's really easy to drop from a seven to a six because of too many mistakes. 
Uh, it's also possible to drop from a 6 to a 5 if you have too many mistakes. Um, so far, the grammar here is actually 6 to 7, and the vocab is also 6 to 7, because he's using some of this high-level vocabulary and referencing very, very well. But he's having too many mistakes. Um, for example, fringe benefits, it's a good collocation, but it's not the right meaning. Um, undemanding renumeration. I don't know if this is a good collocation. Gullible is definitely wrong. Um, and this sentence isn't a complete sentence. So it's making it lean more towards the six. Obviously, this isn't his whole essay. This is just one paragraph. I'm just saying what I see. And we do need to add it, of course. I know I'm cheating a little bit by using um, the spell check, but yeah. <laughs> In conclusion, soaring pedagogy fees associated with hiking rivalry amongst universities can be tackled by increasing the allowances and engendering of do jobs by domain. I'm not sure what that means. But this first part is actually beautiful, high level, high vocabulary. Like this, this here, before by domain, this is an example of like an eight. Uh, it's correct, it's extremely high level, um, yeah, this sentence in blue right here, beautiful, um, yes. Okay, so we went over the mistakes in his essay. Um, the second part down here is okay. The second points that he was making were okay, but the first parts that he was making, the first half of this paragraph are off topic because he's talking about foreign students and I don't see how creating more jobs will help students, especially because this kind of goes against what body one was about. Body one, we were saying um, needing to get a job while you study is bad. And then his solution was get a job while you study. Um, that's higher paying. Um, so that does seem to be a problem. OK, um, unfortunately, guys, we have just run out of time. Um, during my next live stream at the end, I will write my own body two here. If you guys have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments um, or yeah, in the comments now that the stream is ending. Now, thank you so much for stopping by. I'm glad that you found Phil's um, live stream for the mock exam so useful. Remember guys, you guys can also go and have a, as Naz says it, breathtaking speaking mock exam um, with Phil on Friday. He will be doing a live speaking test on Friday at 7. So I hope you guys go over and check him out. Thank you guys so much for joining. Um, you guys have been awesome and I will see you guys next time. Bye everybody!